how are you guys? This is week nine of The Artist's Way. And our topic today is recovering a sense of compassion. We will also be going through and um, reviewing week eight, which the topic was recovering a sense of strength. Um, we have after this week, this is week nine, and then we have 10, 11, and 12. So we are a good three quarters of the way through this. That's my math, right? Anyway, um, oh, Sandra's here. Oh, she ordered the books for the next session. Um, we didn't decide on which book to use for the next session. Um, so I'm assuming that you mean you ordered, I think it was all three books that I described, uh, which was, hi, Kim, welcome. So the three books we were talking about was The War on Art, Art and Fear, and Steal Like an Artist. And Kim also got a couple books to check out for our topic in the future, too. All right. Well, cool. We got a little bit of a bit, uh, book book uh, binge coming up. So um, how was your guys' this week? How did you do? We're going to start with our week eight check-in. I'm doing laundry in the background and I closed the door, so I hope it's not too loud. Oh, also you guys can see on my fridge there, see where I'm pointing? That is my collage that I made for last week's. Um, that's my collage of how I want my vision to be for my future, just all the things that I enjoy. So that's that. Um, I got some flowers here. I did like a little bit of a, a candlelight vigil for the civil rights movement that's going on right now um, for Black Lives Matter and all that. Um, so that actually took up a lot of my attention this last week, but I was very productive with it. Um, I was going to turn the camera around like I had, but it just didn't seem bright enough in here with the lighting. So let me actually open my window more so that the lighting can be a little better in here. Oh, that's why that one's not on. One second, let me fix my lights. It's a little bit brighter. And we'll open this up. So we have a little bit more light. Oops, welcome to my laundry day. Um, okay, so I've got a few people in here, so I think it's uh, safe to say we can get started. Ooh, my lighting looks a lot better. Very good. I am sitting on the floor today. I know I've been moving my moving my stuff around as I from week to week. You don't know how to contribute to the movement. It's been in your morning pages many days. Well, I'll tell you what I've been doing. Um, I started out with um, basically every day I've been watching people's live streams who are actually there so that I can see who, uh, what's actually happening. Um, a really good one here in Seattle is Nikita Oliver. And then there's Omar, and his last name starts with an S, and I can't really see that. Um, but Nikita Oliver, I've been following. She's actually quite involved with um, organizations prior to all of this. And she's been dubbed as one of the spokesmen for a lot of the people that have been like meeting with the mayor. And then let's see if I can find Omar's name. Omar, Sal Omar Salisbury. So O-M-A-R-I. S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y. So go ahead and check out his live streams. He's an independent, um, he's an independent journalist here in Seattle. And then Nikita Oliver, N-I-K-K, oops, N-I-K-K-I-T-A-O-L-I-V-E-R. So these are two local um, figures here in Seattle that are constantly live streaming and taking steps for the movement. Um, 
yes, Jessica Frost. I've been watching her a lot. And I also have like quite a few friends that are in there. So I actually went down and protested yesterday um, down at Cal Anderson Park here in Seattle. And that was a really good experience. Um, they ended up using tear gas, which the mayor, Jenny Durkin, yesterday announced that for 30 days they were going to ban the tear gas. So it lasted less than 24 or 48 hours. I'm not sure. So anyway, go check that out. Um, educate yourself. There's also a movie that um, the WB put out in, in December of 2019, and they made it available free to rent. You can go and find it on you, uh, you can go to Amazon Prime and watch it for free. Um, the video is called, looking for it now. I've been posting a lot about this as I'm following it. So you can also go to my Facebook page, Zandra, and check out a lot of the stuff I've been posting. Um, but the video that I watch, so you can also educate yourself. So there's a video, it's called Just Mercy, and um, it's talking about, uh, it, it's helping to show more about the systematic racism. Uh, Kim says, last Sunday there was a protest here that went bad, numerous businesses hit. One was a salon owned by a local black woman and she's not going to reopen. One is planned for tonight and next Sunday as well. Yeah, there's basically protests going every single day. There's lots of diversity within the movement. Um, there's lots of people coming out to make the movement look bad. So there's a lot of stuff going on. But the best you can do is educate yourself, follow along with it. And um, uh, like I said yesterday, I went and I protested. Um, I made a sign. Like I said, this has been taking up a lot of my attention. Um, which as it as it should so yesterday and I very quickly did this so I wanted to have a sign so I took one of my paintings from a class that I did and I wrote black earthlings matter um, and in retrospect I don't really know if this detracts from the message or adds an artistic element to it I feel kind of wishy-washy about it because um, I don't want to detract from the message. So I made this and I carried it around. So I might not use this at a protest again, and I might just sell it um, uh, and then donate the funds to the movement itself um, after I go in and touch it up. But I think I'm gonna make a more plain, like I really like the no justice, no peace, police, police, so like all that reform stuff. So anyway. That is our local events update. Um, again, just educate yourself. Just um, There's lots of local organizations that you can go and um, get research from. But I would start with Nikita Oliver and the Omari S uh, Sansbury and go to their pages and see what they have to say because they're actually members of the black community and they're actually being um, there on the front lines. So start there. Don't, don't. Um, yeah, I would start with members of the black community and see what they have to say. Um, all right. So Kim says week eight was great. So much insight and very eye opening for her. Yes. Same here. Um, you know, how did you guys think of the, or what did you guys think of the early patternings and exercise? Um, I struggled a little bit with it because I didn't have, I struggled a little bit with it because a lot of my experience didn't quite fit with the, the format, but I just filled it out as best as I could. And in the end, I still found it to be helpful to me. So even if you find something that doesn't quite fit your experience in that, like, you know, your nucleus family wasn't that um, traditional or whatever. Just fill it out as best as you can. And even if you feel like what you have to say doesn't relate, in the end, I found that it did relate for me. Um, so, like for me, some of the highlights for me on this were like, um, without getting too personal into this, was, you know, a lot of my stuff was about putting other people first, about um, religious fundamentalism taking over. So like 
artists were sinful people was one of the things that I came up with. Um, and I didn't really realize how much that affected my, um, I didn't really realize how much that affected my, um, what do you call not your conscious mind, but the other one, subconscious mind. Um, so, you know, I, you just push forward through the exercise. And even if you feel like your answers aren't quite on par, like I still found it to be really helpful. Like it was really illuminating for me. So being told to serve others and to not even prioritize my needs at all, like, and I'm talking like basic needs or even, you know, desires and wants, like that can be effective. So um, that can be, um, that can affect you. And <laughs> number 17 was really funny because, and, and this is like literally what I wrote. When people say I have talent, I think they want to just blow sunshine up my ass. And that's a phrase, that's a phraseology that somebody used that I never forgot. Sandra says the best thing that she got for, from it was that she grew up thinking artists were frivolous people. Well, that's valid, you know, and if that's ringing true for you, then that's something that uh that you can utilize like i said like mine was sinful people you know um ooh, and then the thing is i'm suspicious that i'm fooling myself about my capabilities right so like i can whenever i do get that confidence then i immediately like shut myself down because who are you kidding you you aren't capable of that and that was a big message you know um for me when I was a kid as um, with my biological nucleus family is that, you know, who are you kidding? Who are you? You know, you, we aren't that type of people. We don't have that type of capability, blah, 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 blah. And then um, another one is, you know, I just can't believe I'm ever doing enough. So I tend to uh, produce a lot and I tend to hold myself to really high standards and, um, failing to stop and celebrate that or to realize that, you know, my efforts are um, generating uh, results um, and that it is enough. So, yeah. And then um, if uh, anybody else had any, any comments, you know, what was the biggest thing that you learned? And, and for me from that is that like, I really don't give myself enough credit and that um, a lot of, that innate stuff that I learned um, was associating positive things that I want with a negative connotation. So Kim says her parents were great at supporting her art. Her dad taught her woodworking and how to rebuild a car. Her family is very artistic and encouraged. Her teachers always work to bring out artistic talents. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear that. So it sounds like you had a really good, solid um, support system for your art, which is something to be really proud of. And I hope that the exercise still helped you to really solidify um, all of that for you. So that's really exciting to know. All right. So the affirmations part I thought was really cool. Um, I actually ended up taking an affirmation and putting it onto my art easel. And the one that I chose to do that, I picked out five, of course. Um, but the one that I chose to do that was I now treat myself and my creativity more gently. Um, again, like I said, mine is associated with like high standards and, you know, um, moral um, connotations apparently, which I thought was really interesting because I find myself to have very high standards as far as my morals go. But, you know, everybody's different and everybody categorizes things different. So, uh, what I view as a good morality might not be something that somebody else does. So, and that's kind of how that ties in. So, I now treat myself and my creativity more gently, um, was what I decided. I'm actually going to move this a little bit closer. Is that better? Is that worse? All right, we'll stick with this. Okay, sitting on the floor is a little bit of, I just like to sit on the floor. 
So, and then we were given a few tasks to do um, after we did the affirmations. Did anybody have an affirmation that really rang true with them that they actually ended up wanting to um, focus on more? Like I said, I, I pointed out mine. Um, and it was a good list of like, probably 12 or 15 affirmations. And so depending on your, your experience, you're going to have something else that um, is more predominant for you that you're going to need to hear more. Um, this one, the tasks this week um, were pretty in depth. And so I went ahead and did um, the step, the goal search so I have many different goals for myself. Some of them are goals that I just want to do once. Some of them are goals that I would like for longevity. Um, and then others are goals that um, I want to create a business and hire people to run it for me and just have it on the back burner. Um, so lots of, lots of interesting goals. So mine was quite extensive for my goal search and it gave us six tasks to do to, um, for each goal. So that was quite a bit for me. Um, and so I'm wondering if you guys did that. Sandra's affirmation that she really liked was I have a right to be an artist and it's a recurring theme that I have a right concept yeah I mean this is your life and you need to live it on your terms right so if you have something that you desire of course you have a right to go and accept that from the universe and you have a right to um, explore it and uh, make that come to fruition and being gentle with yourself as you go along the way to get there. So I think that's cool. I think that's a really good one um, that I have a right to be an artist. And that's like I just like I was saying earlier in the series, Andra, um, where I was like, who am I to be a teacher? Who am I to, you know, show people or instruct people on how to do something? Um, and then Sandra said she first noticed in. I, don't, I can't pronounce that, but apparently she read a book. Um, you have a right to be here as much as the trees and stars is in the line that spoke most to you. Yes, it's beautiful. Like we're, we're all an energy um, that came into this world and we all have something um, that drives us, whether we know it or not. Um, and even if you're, and, and I think it can be as simple as just living a life happily and it can be something that's just like living a peaceful life where you just go to work and you come home and you make dinner and you have your family or, you know, you have your hobby and you love what you do and you just enjoy every minute. Like a lot that looks different for everybody. So just like the, as different as the trees look from the stars, you know, that, that can look different. So yeah, I really like that. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then with the tasks, we define our, oh, wait, here we go back to the affirmations. Ooh, am I getting these laggy? I don't know. Kim says her affirmation is, I now share my creativity more openly. I am always shy about sharing my artwork. Yeah, because it's that if I share it, are they going to judge it? Do you find that that's, that's how you're feeling there? Um, sharing artwork, um, art is vulnerability. So um, that's something that I think can be, you'd be surprised how many artists that do share their artwork actually feel that way, I think. Like anytime I finish a project and I go and I post it, um, especially if it's something where I was in an exploratory phase or maybe it's something that's really important to me, um, the more important it is to me, I almost feel like the harder it is to share. Um, and of course that depends on how often I've been sharing things of that caliber. Um, so that's an interesting thought too. So I'm gonna read that again. I now share my creativity more openly. 
Yeah, because art is a piece of you, right? Like you put a piece of you into every piece of artwork because that's your perspective, whether it be as something as, as simple as a caricature or a cartoon, um, that's your perspective on something. So that, that can be really vulnerable. But you, Kim, you sent me those pictures of your stained glass pieces and you told me that you sold every last one of them, which is phenomenal. That's really cool to have every piece that you made this week the three, all three pieces be sold. That's, that's wonderful. You know, I often make a lot of artwork and people will compliment it, but you know, not everybody purchases it, that they like it, you know, so people can, people can also appreciate your artwork without purchasing it. Um, and I think it's important to acknowledge that it is being appreciated as well. So the goals that we did no, only the mirror sold. Oh, okay. That mirror was really badass, though. The other two pieces were really, really cool. I really liked the iris one. That one was my favorite. Um, but, yeah, those pieces are really cool. Well, you did sell one. And then um, was that, was the mirror the one that was the custom piece that somebody ordered? Uh, Zandra, I have an Etsy that I've kind of abandoned and I have my own website that I sell my stuff on. Um, but it's in dire need of a facelift and reorganization because it got, um, a little bit, I need to update all my paintings and stuff on it. But yeah, no, I don't have a red bull bubble. Red blue. So. Ah, still designing the commission piece, but that's still good too, because that's gonna be paid for. Wonderful, guys. La la la. Needs a facelift. Yeah. No, nah, it's just one of those things where you just gotta have to carve out the time to do the stuff that maybe isn't the most fun when you're running a business. So um, I switched from working um, 20 to 30 hours a week to um, 40 hours a week on top of doing my business. So um, I'm still adjusting to that and I did just move too. So still adjusting, lots of stuff going on. It will happen. It's definitely I'm definitely being productive, so don't get me wrong. I'm doing stuff. All right. So, again, we're going to write out our goals. I hope you guys got to actually do that um, because the tasks this week actually build on task number one, which was the goal search. So I went through and I listed out. I answered, I answered all the questions about um you know, what was my dream? What was one concrete goal that signals that the accomplishment? And I think that's really important is that um, if you have a goal um, or like a dream to actually figure out what it is, what is the thing that will tell you that that dream's been accomplished? Because a lot of times, like, um, like for instance, when I first started my business, um, I was teaching some workshops and I set a goal for myself that you know I was gonna do I think oh god I don't remember what my goal was oh oh it's escaping me I had so many goals um but there was this one time where I had this goal and um I didn't even realize until two weeks after I accepted a gig that I had actually reached one of my goals and I didn't realize and stop to celebrate it. And I think that that's really important, defining what it is that will signify to you that you've reached your goal will help you then recognize um, and celebrate the fact that you have reached that goal. So that's really important. And so then building on that, then we go into you know, uh, some of our other tasks or listing five things that you're not allowed to do. Um, 20, listing 20 things that you like to do. Planning a perfect day of your life as it is now constituted and then planning your perfect day 
like if you didn't have any requirements that you had to meet or obligations. So I went ahead and did that. How about a check-in, you guys? Did we all do our morning pages this week? Um, Zondra said she really liked listing off the things that she's not allowed to do. So did I. Um, you know, let's see, what was that for? Like, I listed off, like, stuff that I wasn't allowed to do, and I'm just like, well, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Because a lot of it had to do with, like, my artistic blocks. Zandra says all the things that she listed that she wasn't allowed to do, she decided that she was going to do. Kim says, yes, she agrees with that sentiment. So, like, some of my things that I decided I wasn't allowed to do um, came to me because I actually did the... Um, did the exercise from last week, which was listing off um, the the one that Zandra you said that you were struggling with, where you like looked at your early patternings in childhood. Um, so like I wasn't allowed to finish my art, celebrate my accomplishments, be proud of my creations, love myself as I am, or speak up without regret. So the things that I'm not allowed to do, I feel are things that I have a right to do and an obligation to myself to do. So it's interesting to take a look at the things that are really counterintuitive in your subconscious and your behavioral patterns because this helps you shine a light on it. And then you can really see that really you're the only one stopping yourself. Hmm. Kim quit her job five times in that exercise, <laughs> right? Then, you know, it asks us, you know, list your perfect day, list your perfect day if you didn't have to fulfill your current obligations. So um, I'm pretty close. Um, I've been, I've been really um, working on a lot of this stuff and it's really cool to go back and do through all this stuff and see like, okay, yeah, I've come a long way, but like there's still a lot of this stuff hanging on. So even if you go through this book once, it's really good to go back and revisit it because you're going to make more and more progress. So that's cool. That's cool. What are check-ins? So I, I did like four days of my morning pages. Um, I was really, really, really tempted to abandon it entirely because of everything that's distracting right now going on in the world. My artist date, I did a lot of stuff and it all had to do with like, well, most of it had to do with like this, this, um, you know, Black Lives Matter thing. Like people, people are hurting and have been hurting for a really long time. And um, I've just been, basically I used my artist date to really focus on what's going on in the world because, um, I just felt like I needed to to learn more and explore and educate myself and stay on top of it. And um, I have um, an art project that I'm researching right now that I want to do to help the families of people that have um, been essentially murdered by police apprehending them. So um, that's kind of taken a lot of my focus. Also, I did, um, you know, I watched a movie, that movie, Just Mercy, um, on the civil rights movement Or I watched Just Mercy, and it's talking about the systematic racism within our government and our uh, police. Um, I did, uh, I, oh, on the full moon, on Friday was a full moon, and so I celebrated and focused in my, I celebrated myself and my accomplishments and I focused my intentions um, for everything that I want during the year, including what I want for other people. Um, and so that was really nice. I kind of did like a spa day. I bought these flowers um, and I just kind of did that on Friday. Um, I, I attended and photographed events. Um, I've taken screenshots of the live streams that I felt were really powerful to utilize in, um, art to help the movement. Um, and that was kind of my artist state. Um, Kim is saying that she thinks working a real job for years allows you to develop your art. 
think of that as an apprenticeship. Then when you are ready to quit your day job, you have a platform to stand on. Yeah. So with my business, I was actually doing my business half time and working part time. Um, and then I found that, well, number one, um, I'm now getting more art gigs because I've been working at it really hard for so long. Um, now I'm getting art gigs where people are just referring people to me. In fact, I just got a graphic design gig referred to me today. I have a mural coming up. So I now I'm finding that um, I am getting more gigs kicked my way, um, but working part time and at the time when I was working part time and um, and doing my business part time, I was still kind of just like scraping by and I found that to be like kind of stressful. And so then I was like, okay, well now I want to do a job that pays for my bills a hundred percent. And then, um, I can just do gigs on top of that and then switch back to doing what I was doing. Um, and now I'm finding that like I had a bunch of gigs coming my way to where like I probably could have stuck with the 20 hours for somebody else and 20 hours for mine. Um, actually, realistically, it's like 40 hours for me and 20 hours for someone else. But um, I could have stuck with that. But then we have the whole climate with um Oh, the illness. So like um, I had some corporate gigs coming up to where I was going to teach some corporate workshops and um, that had to be postponed. Um, I started doing uh, business signage for businesses and now a lot of these businesses are struggling. So a lot of what my income was going to be has kind of um, been postponed or um, people need to reassess how they're doing their businesses to move forward in the current climate. And so that's taking people a time of adjustment. So same with me. Um, I'm still finding that too. So yeah. In response to you, Kim. Uh, Zandra thought that too, but I've realized during the quarantine, it's just the man holding me back. Sure. I haven't learned nothing but it's doing more to harm than help now. Like leaving a cast on after the broken arm is mended. Sandra says she's really been worried about her favorite artists, knowing how their incomes may be disappearing on this pandemic. Well, the good news is people are very adaptable. And, um, you know, if you're not adaptable, you best well learn how to or you're going to sink. And everybody has to find their own way. And I think that right now the current climate is giving people a lot of time to think about their priorities and you know it's it's definitely really difficult but there's still work out there like i said um i just got a graphic design gig coming my way um i've been really lucky enough to where i have a job that does pay my bills and then whatever my art income is just goes to my business expenditures and my um Typically, my business expenditures. Yeah, anyway. Kim's only job is her art, and it has been since 2011. So that's a good solid nine years, which is awesome. And, yeah, like, you know, everybody's got to kind of find their own way through it. Um, but the important part is just not giving up. Like, what do you want to do? What do you – what? And and you need to be able to – and I'm working on this now, so I'm not talking like I have it all figured out, but um, you need to be able to assess the current climate, the current demand, what is in demand, and um, what can you do. And I think that a lot of your your market is gonna come from finding your niche. Um, I'm more of like, a, I'm spread around, my interests are really spread really far and thin, so I've kind of made it harder on myself because I do a lot more. Um, different types of things so my focus is spread like a web rather than, so I'm casting like a wide net rather than a focus niche so um there's positives and negatives that comes with both so you just kind of have to figure out what works for you yeah well everybody's 
everybody's got their own worries right now. And, um, you know, a lot of people are struggling. So I think that sending out good vibes their way is what we can do. And, you know, if you hear of jobs and, you know, of somebody that's out of one, just referring people jobs and trying to connect those dots for people, that's all you can really do. Kim says networking is key. Share with everyone you know at work and in life. Sandra says, I feel like the most creative people I know are like that. Not a matter of what to do, but what can I not do? Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of different um, ways to look at it. And... I think that um, in my experience, like what Kim said, um, and it's like trying to pick a favorite child. Yeah, well, in like my experience, like Kim said, and I have another friend who um, who is a very, very talented creative mind, um, and they said, you know, trying to live off your art is difficult if you don't have that customer base or revenue stream because then you can almost creatively block yourself by putting too much pressure pressure on yourself. So um, what Kim said like really rang true with me. Um, I know that I struggled a lot with that when I was doing the part-time um, work. Um, it it creates, creates a lot of unnecessary um, hardship for you if you're, but everybody's different, so. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but I, I'm finding, obviously, since I chose it to become employed by somebody who pays my bills, and then um, I just need to, then my struggle is carving out that time and having a balance between my creative time and my relaxing and my work. So it's more about balance for me rather than the, oh my God, am I gonna be able to eat today? So, um, I feel like I've found a good spot for myself. So, without further ado, we're on week nine. And today's topic is, or this week's topic, is recovering a sense of compassion. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and read the gray bar. This is our topic. This week finds us facing the internal blocks to creativity. It may be tempting to abandon ship at this point, but don't. We will explore and acknowledge the emotional difficulties that beset us in the past as we made our creative efforts. We will undertake healing the shame of past failures. We will gain in compassion as we reparent the frightened artist child who yearns for creative accomplishment. We will learn tools to dismantle emotional blocks and support renewed risk. Yep, 75% of the way. Holy cannoli, says Sandra. <laughs> Dope. All right, so the first topic of this week is fear. Um, I feel like the past few weeks, I mean, this entire book, we've really just been creeping up and creeping up and unraveling and unraveling. And the um, Zondra, like you said, uh, the tasks were pretty deep last week. And so I feel like because we're 75% of the way through, I feel like we're really going to come up with some some really good stuff the last, the last few weeks. Um, so be prepared to really just be open-minded and and um, accepting of, of yourself and the things that you're finding. Um, so most of us have spent years using the wrong names for our behaviors. We've wanted to create and we've been unable to create and we have called that inability laziness. This is not merely inaccurate, it is cruel. Accuracy and compassion serve us far better. Blocked artists are not lazy, they are blocked. So um, 
I spent like two years unable to create any art and I've been an artist my entire life. And so I was very, 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 very blocked. Like it would be the point to where I would sit, I would sit down at a canvas and I wouldn't even know what to paint. And I'd just sit there and I wouldn't paint anything. And then, um, I reached out to somebody for assistance and I was like, look, I don't know what to do. Like I'm an artist, but I can't create anything. And they encouraged me to just sit at the canvas and show up and not require myself to make anything. So they just said, you know, just sit at the canvas and if you can't be anything, that's fine. Just keep showing up day after day. And that, that advice actually worked. So blocked artists aren't lazy. They are blocked. Um, and being cruel to yourself and calling it lazy is really unhelpful and it's actually counterproductive. It actually causes more of a block. So be, remind yourself to be gentle with yourself. Um, the blocked artist typically expends a great deal of energy, just not visibly. They spend their energy on self-hatred, regret, grief, jealousy. They spend energy on self-doubt. So I like that quote, um, don't feed the fears. So begin with baby steps. You need to think in terms of a, instead of thinking in terms of a big scary task, think Think of uh, the baby steps that you would need to get there, just one thing at a time. When these large tasks are not accomplished or even begun, the blocked artist calls it laziness. Do not call the inability to start laziness, call it fear. Sandra says she feels that. Part of why she's here is because as a songwriter, she's been blocked for at least a half decade now, which hurts to say or even think, but it's true. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like two solid years, I couldn't create anything. So five years... You know, that's, that's a long time to not be able to, to do anything. And it's fear. It's fear. Um, and it comes up for a variety of reasons. But the fact that it's there, um, I think just accepting, accepting that and saying, okay, well, what can I do now? It's baby steps. Baby steps are what you can do now. And this is a really awesome thing that you've done for yourself, Sandra, showing up. Um, and I'm really happy that you have. And I'm happy that you're here too, Kim. So most frequently it is fear of abandonment and most blocked artists try to become artists against either their parents good wishes or their parents good judgment. You'd better not just be an artist. You'd better be a great artist if you're going to hurt your parents so much. Um, and this can be, con you can be conscious of this or you cannot. Like I said, like that exercise that we did um, last week about, um, you know, your your early early patternings exercise um that really helped me and i think that's really going to tie into this week so um good job you've done it and now we're going to build on it making any act of art entails the risk of separation and the loss of loved ones because artists still yearn for their creative goals and then they feel guilty the guilt demands that they set a goal for themselves right off the bat that they must be great artists in order to justify this rebellion. This is exactly what I do to myself. I won't create, I won't create, I won't create. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I have to create. So I'm going to like take on this big job. And even though I haven't been practicing, I'll still take on the job because then that will force me to do it. And it works, but it's a little bit cruel. So um, I'm here because I want to be less cruel to myself, right? So like I'll take on jobs that I'm like, I'm not certain that I can even do, but I'm like, I know I want to do it. And um, I feel the creative drive to do it. Uh, so, but that's one of the ways that I, I trick myself into doing things. It's like a mind game for me. Um, and it's not necessary. It's not gentle. It's not a gentle way to do it at all. So it is one way to do it, but it's very rough on me. So the need to produce a great work of art makes it hard to produce any art at all, which is why I'm like, you know, if you can turn it into an exercise and set your expectations aside and just say, this is an exercise, which is why um, those daily drawings that I've been doing, you know, just sketching for five minutes. You know, I, I don't have any great expectations about a sketch that I took five minutes to make. So um, turn, get more exercise into your practice and less um, accomplishment driven goals. So anyway, finding it hard to begin a project 
does not mean you won't be able to do it. It means you will need help. Give yourself the permission to begin small and go in baby steps. These steps must be rewarded, must be rewarded. Setting impossible goals creates enormous fear, which creates procrastination, which we wrongly call laziness. Do not call procrastination laziness. Call it fear. And what is the cure for this? It's love. Use love for your artist to cure its fear. Sandra says, that's good. She's had a really hard time with non-accomplishment. I've gotten better, but I've got a long way to go. I mean, you're never going to be there. There's always more to do. So focusing on your accomplishments is, is going to be the best way to encourage yourself to go forward. Jawa says, hi. Hi, Jawa. Nice to see you. Uh, you fell off, but recently started the morning pages again. Awesome. Well, feel free to jump right back in with us. Um, a lot of what we're doing now has built upon what we've done earlier, but there's no harm in continuing on with us, Jawa, from the point we're at now. And then, um, you can always go back and revisit stuff. Um, the, the book, I, I always love to go back and revisit the book. So that's totally fine. I'm really glad that you came back to say hi, and it's good to see you here. So feel free to just hang out and participate, and um, good to see you. Zandra says, by measure of this book, she's terrified of yoga, which is comical. Uh, she says, welcome back, Jalwa. And she was wondering where you went to. Well, you know, sometimes we don't always stick to what we say, or uh, that's not how I'm trying to word this. Sometimes we don't always... Um, fulfill what we want for ourselves and by that it means finishing a book um i have a book sitting over there that i was determined in finishing reading by january and i'm still like only a quarter of the way through it so it's okay to drop off and return back to it um it's about that focus returning your focus refocusing 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 and being non-judgmental about you know falling off. So Kim says she's glad you're here, Jawa. Welcome back again. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, currently, Jawa, we're in chapter nine or week nine. Our next topic is enthusiasm in this, in this uh, little chapter here. And it must take so much discipline to be an artist. We are often told by well-meaning people who are not artists but wish they were. In the short run, discipline may work, but it will work only for a while. Now, this, this I feel like, was written for me um, because I'm, like, I keep telling you guys, like, I keep doing that thing where I'm like, I won't do it, I won't do it, and then I'm like, okay, I have to do it, so I'm going to set this lofty goal, and I'm going to assign somebody to make me accountable, i.e. taking on a job that someone's commissioning me to do, or, um, you know, for me... Um, and this speaks directly to you, Jawa, like I would start going through this book and I'd drop off on like week six and then I wouldn't pick it up again. And so I was like, you know what? What's a good way to force myself to get through the book? How about I host an online recurring weekly live stream? And guess what? It's kept me on track because I have made myself responsible to you guys. I'm more willing to show up for you guys than I am for myself, right? And so that's something that um, I've learned about myself, and I use that to my advantage to accomplish things. But um, again, we have here in the short run, discipline may work, but it will work only for a while. So you really got to figure out like what drives you. Um, and you know, I would hope that making yourself happy will drive you. Um, and ultimately that's the goal for me to um, set a goal for myself and fulfill it because just because I want to do it for myself. So um, holding yourself accountable, um, showing up for yourself because you want to. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. I do enjoy hosting these, um, these live streams with you guys. And I do enjoy showing up and having you guys here. Um, We've got a, some action here in the chat. Let's see. Jawa is 
Oh, wow. Jala says, thanks. Life gets messy and he's easily distracted. Aren't we all? Oh, my gosh, especially right now. Kim says, Jala, I am part crow. See something shiny and chase it. Oh, my God. Oh, I've got shiny object syndrome, too. Sandra says, and you have enriched our lives with it. So thank you. <laughs> right? Everyone here is contributing, whether, <laughs> you know, you've just popped back in or you've <laughs> only been distracted here and there. Like we've all, we've all had our struggles with staying on track with this. So don't feel like it's just you. Yeah. I definitely have had my struggles staying on track. Um, so anyway, Oh, Kim says, Sarah, you are a great leader. So glad you started this group. Thank you guys. Much obliged. Um, I, like I said, I do enjoy doing this. Um, it's just, uh, it's so easy to, to, uh, not fulfill obligations to ourselves. And it's so easy to put, um, our obligations to others above ourselves. So when we can find a way to merge those two together, I think that it's really cool. Um, oh, Zandra, thank you. She says she second Kim's motion. Thank you guys. I'm glad that you're enjoying your time with me. I'm enjoying it too. And like I said, like, um, you guys are helping keep me on track and I'm helping keep you on track. And, um, we're finding a sense of community here together. And especially in this time right now where we're not able to meet in person. Um, but we are, um, bringing people together from all across the U S. So that's really wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. So yeah, discipline. Finding ways to make it fun is going to be the way in which you're going to succeed with it. So the discipline itself, not the creative outflow, becomes the point, right? So, um, and I found that a little bit too, that... Uh, that all default to fulfilling obligations rather than having that fun. Over any extended period of time, being an artist requires enthusiasm more than discipline. It is a spiritual commitment, a loving surrender to our creative process, a loving recognition of all the creativity around us. So I'm going to circle back here. Over any experience, extended period of time, being an artist requires enthusiasm more than discipline. And that speaks to keeping up momentum. So if I have a project that I'm working on and I'm working on it pretty consistently, like the way that I work on things is I'll chunk it and I'll binge on it. So if I'm binging on a painting, um, it's easier for me to continue working on it if I keep that momentum up. Um, and then like I'll do long periods where I binge on the art. And then once I'm accomplished, the goal is to take a break once I've accomplished it um, while still taking mini breaks in there. Um, and that helps me the way that I work best is doing it that way um, because that momentum keeps my enthusiasm for the project up and it's like okay this is it this is it I got to do this next when, the longer the break I take while I'm working on a project the harder it is for me to get back into working on the project and it's almost harder than starting the project itself because I've taken so much time so momentum helps carry on your enthusiasm is my side note so enthusiasm is grounded in play, not work. Our artist is actually our child within, our inner playmate. True, our artist may rise at dawn to greet the typewriter or easel in the morning stillness. That's carving out that time to play. But this event has more to do with the child's love of secret adventure than with the ironclad discipline. So I'll meet you at 6 a.m. and we'll goof around is what you're telling yourself rather than, oh, I'll meet you at 6 a.m. and we're gonna work to finish that project because we have this hard, fast deadline. And this is, um, I think this is my most important part of the chapter for me. Our artist child can best be enticed to work by treating work as play. Many artists find that their workspaces are built are best dealt with as play spaces. Remember that art is a process and the process is supposed to be fun. So when you're creating your environment in which you work in, let's keep that in mind too. 
Our creative work is actually our creativity itself at play in the field of time. And at the heart of this play is the mystery of joy. And this is a, um, a rephrasing of this quote here. The journey is always the only arrival. The journey is always the only arrival, is this quote. And let's interpret it by saying our creative work is actually our creativity itself at play in the field of time. So if you're enjoying the creation process during the time that you're creating it, that's what's really important instead of focusing on the end goal is that message. We've got some action in the chat again. We've got Jawa. He says, yes, yes, yes. Enthusiasm over discipline. That's what I want. I get so much motivation early on to learn new creative activities, and then eventually that fades. Yeah, and that process of fading out, um, for me personally, is, like I said, when I take a break, and instead of taking a mini break, um, you let that grow. You let that mini break grow into a giant gap. Um Kim says she loves the quote on the sidebar of that page. Oh, yeah, let me read that. Art evokes the mystery without which the world would not exist. Art evokes the mystery without which the world would not exist. And I think that's how we keep our enthusiasm up, Jawa. Like, if we can really, like, focus on this is play, this is play, this is mysterious, I want to discover it, I want to be inquisitive, um, what would happen if I do this? What would happen if I do that? And again, like I said, keeping that momentum. I've got a bunch of notes here. I actually like literally wrote in my book. I stopped writing in my book for a while. So, um, this was kind of like a good part too. So this, this little section covers creative U-turns and this speaks to, us not fulfilling our obligations to ourself. Um, Jawa, this might be particularly interesting for you. Um, and obviously Kim and Zandra as well. Zandra says, backtracking a little bit here to that enthusiasm. Uh, Zandra says, on the same idea, I tried this week to make time for songwriting, but found myself just feeling angry. And I realized that by setting aside specific time, I was expecting product from the time. Zandra, on that note, I would encourage you to set a, set, still set that time. Set that time aside, but release your expectations of what you're doing in that time. It's just like I said um, I was encouraged to do. To show up at my canvas, even if I couldn't paint anything. And that act alone really helped. And that was one of the, the things that that was the main piece that got me out of my block. So I'm going to encourage you to continue showing up, but just release your expectations. Um, and also, um, how about I'm going to give you an exercise, Zandra. Um, this is something that I do when I'm writing poetry um, is if I, so you don't, you need to figure out what your process is for writing. Um, and I don't say that in a demanding, you need to do this way. I'm saying over time, this will come to you. Um, but one thing that I like to do is if I'm feeling an emotion, um, I'll just sit there and I'll write. It's just like with your morning pages. Just sit there and you write and you write and you let it flow. And then I will go back and highlight words that um, feel especially emotive to me in that moment. Um, and then I'll go through and I'll take those words and I'll look up a thesaurus. I'll get, I have a thesaurus and a dictionary app on my phone and I take that word and I plug it into the thesaurus and I write words that feel really eloquent to me that, um, I feel maybe are a better match or maybe flow together better. And so I'll, I'll take that and then I'll go back and I'll rewrite what I originally wrote or then maybe write onto something else. And a lot of times what I write gets divided up into several different projects. Like from that sitting, I'll have started three poems and then I'll separate those out into being separate. 
and then I'll pick one and I'll work on that and then I'll hone it in. And I don't know if this is something that you do in your practice at all, um, but I encourage you to sit down and try and do that. Um, Zondra says that's fair. It's a good idea because yeah, I don't know what to do. Oh, homework. <laughs> Jala says he'll take a look. Perfect. All right. So Zondra, I hope that made sense to you. If you want to, um, PM me, um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the comments here and I'll answer them. Sandra says that's really good. Some of that I do, but quite a bit of that I don't. So I'll try that out. Yeah. Um, so I really like words and a lot of times I'll just like look up. So like the words that you write down from the thesaurus, a lot of them will have different, um, different, um, inferations. So I'll plug each of the thesaurus words into the dictionary and make sure I understand all the inferences properly. Um, and, and then that's the way you can really flush out and find the most appropriate word for what you're trying to utilize or from the message you're trying to say. So, yeah. Um, all right, back to it. Creative U-turns, that's one way to get out of it. Um, also, you guys, um, I have multiple, multiple disciplines that I that I utilize for creative outlets. Um, I'm sure most of you probably didn't know I write poetry. Um, I don't write it habitually. Um, so if you want ever want to bounce ideas um, around, we could have a um, like a creative creative chat where we just bounce ideas around. It's uh, talking to somebody else is a really good way of of figuring out new processes, um, new subjects, new projects to work on. So um, definitely reach out. Um, don't feel like you have to sit with your creative block on your own. Don't feel like um, you can't talk to people about what it is you're working on. I think that's really important to, um, to really break out of things is talking about it. So creative U-turns, um, I'm gonna encourage you guys um, to really keep an open mind as I'm saying this. Um, this particular part of this chapter, you're going to, you could possibly find that some of the things that I'm reading out of here are going to be, feel like personal attacks. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to not view it that way. I'm going to encourage you to view it as, um, this is, it, it, especially if you feel like it's a personal attack to really sit and take note of that, maybe highlight it in your book or write a note off to the side that that's something you want to pay particular attention to. Cause oftentimes when we get really emotional about things, it's something that um, runs a lot deeper than you really know. And a lot of times we like to avoid those things. So please keep an open mind. Um, please, uh, you know, do your best to continue listening, even if it might, um, might not feel great. Um, oh, here we go. Please stay open and notice any resistance and gently, without judgment, try to just hear. Kim says, saying out loud for sharing it with people you feel comfortable with would be so amazing for all artists. Yes, exactly. If you, so it's just like back earlier in, um, I don't remember what, what week it was, but Julia actually even said that when you're sharing your work with somebody, find a trusted person. If you're not used to sharing your work with somebody, find somebody that you can trust, who who you admire, who is gentle with you. And um, especially if it's somebody in the field of what you're trying to do, um, find a good mentor or find find one of those people. Oh, Kara, what does she call it? One of your um, one of your cheerleaders. Find someone who cheers you on and share work with them. You need encouragement. You need encouragement. Where we can criticize, we we are so apt and capable of criticizing our own work. Um, not to say that there's not a place for constructive criticism, but um, depending on where you are in your journey, you just need to hear your cheerleader and you just need to be able to create. 
Java says, I'm opening my mind as you speak. Perfect, because we're about ready to dive into it. Here we go. Recovering from artist block, just like recovering from any major illness or energy or injury, requires a commitment to health. A productive artist is quite often a happy person. You guys know that. At some point, we might make an active choice to relinquish the joys and privileges accorded to the emotional invalid. A productive artist is quite often a happy person. This can be very threatening as a self-concept to those who are getting used to their needs, their needs met by being unhappy. I'd love to, but you see, I have these crippling fears. Can get us a lot of attention. We get more sympathy as crippled artists than as functional ones. Those of us who are addicted to sympathy in the place of creativity can become increasingly threatened as we become increasingly functional. Side note here, addictions can come in many forms. It can be the fear of missing out and dropping your work to go and do something um, rather than fulfilling your own need, your own personal needs. You're going out to um, not miss out on something. Um, you can be addicted to people and relationships. You can be addicted. You can be addicted to people abusing you. You can be addicted to substances and numbing out. So I'm going to read this again. Those of us who are addicted to sympathy in the place of creativity can become increasingly threatened as we become increasingly functional. So as you become increasingly functional, that act can threaten your addiction to sympathy. So this is another way in which a blockage can manifest. So let me see if I can think of an example here. Very often, I will put my relationships with people ahead of my art and my business. Um, and it's like an addiction to that, that attention from that person rather than finding fulfillment in the creativity. And though I do find fulfillment in my creativity, um, I, I have to particularly watch that I'm balancing all that. Jawa says there's so many famous artists that are sad and depressed though. Yeah, but there's also a stigma that comes with that, that you have to be sad and depressed in order to create good art. And that's just not true. It's just not true. And um, I think that so many of us feel like, I mean, even like so many of us have felt like if I'm not this way, then I will no longer be able to create. And I'm here to assure you that that's not true. And often you, those people that are sad and depressed, um, you know, you have so much more potential than what you're producing in that state. Um, since, since I've become less struggling with, with um, my own bouts of the, that subject, um, I have actually been able to be softer with myself and less harsh with myself. And um, I have less artistic struggle because a lot of that sadness and depression can be tied into your creative your, your creativity too. Just think, Zandra, like you, you're having trouble um, producing your poetry and that generates its own sadness and depression. Um, and I'm projecting this. You did not tell me this. I'm, I'm projecting that onto you. I'm imagining that um, through my own experience, not being able to create my artwork became a vicious cycle of that continuance. Right. So um, me not being able to create my artwork sitting at that blank canvas created a lot of 
a, a kinetic energy, it became a cycle for me. Um, so again, I'm, everybody's different. Everybody's going to process this all differently. Um, this can feel a little bit like an attack, um, or like there's barbs. Um, and again, I'm just saying like, you know, keep an open mind. Um, a lot of times the things that we're most resistant to hearing, um, you know, it can either be something that you just don't believe is true. Um, and you're resistant to hearing it because you just don't believe it. Um, or a lot of times it can be something that you're resistant to hearing because it, it rings. Well, you won't allow it to ring true. Um, but you know, figure that out for yourself. Um, figure out if, you know, just, I encourage you to be honest with yourself right here. Um, cause like I said, like I, I struggle with this on my own level. Jawa says true. I feel like most people would be more productive being happy because I know personally when I've been sad and depressed, I never feel like creating. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Like you have to force yourself to get up and show up. Whereas if you're happy and you're bubbly, you can find that childlike excitement. You can find that childlike excitement for what you're doing. Um, and when you're struggling with depression, a lot of times it's hard just to get up and brush your teeth. <laughs> so um, that's been my experience with that. So again, just really... Um, it's, it's not a hard subject to talk about. Um, it's not a hard subject to, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely um, deep stuff. Um, and again, uh, Zandra, please, uh, I was just uh, trying to involve or continue continue our conversation, not point finger. Um, it's just because I related that to myself. Um and I felt uh, that I understood that, but um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not trying to call anybody out. Um, and hopefully that was okay. Um, so anyway, we usually commit, see, and I don't know this term, but I know the inference of it. Um, so we usually commit creative taboo. I'm just gonna change the word. Um, either on the eve of or in the wake of our first creative victory. Have you guys ever noticed that? When you're about ready to accomplish something, all of a sudden you want to drop it and walk away. And it's not necessarily that you consciously want to. It's that there's a distraction or there's this or there's that. And there's something that just gets pushed in the way of what it is that you want. So the glare of success can send the recovering artist scurrying back into the cave of self-defeat. We're more comfortable being a victim of artist block than risking having to consistently be productive and healthy. An artistic U-turn arrives on a sudden wave of indifference. And you guys, like, I'm reading this, and this is hitting home with me, too. Like, I do this. I This is totally hitting home with me. Um, you know... I'll get a project 90% done and I'll abandon it. Boom. Oh, not interested anymore because I'm almost done. Like, so that's another reason why I, um, set deadlines for myself and, and, and um, uh, oblige myself to other people and say, I'm going to create this for you because I'll abandon it if it's just for myself. Um, and that's just like a mind game that I play with myself. Um, and depending on where you are, you you may or may not want to do that. I feel like maybe um, depending on the subject, depending on what it is you're creating. So um, don't, don't be mean to yourself. Um, So let's read this quote on the, on the side here. This is by Stendhal. He says, man is not free to refuse to do the thing which gives him more pleasure than any other conceivable action. And I wrote a little note here. I said, you will always circle back if you decide to keep yourself accountable and stay plugged into the community. Kim says, I have a ship 
pile of unfinished projects. That's like I was telling you guys last week how I made a rule for myself. I can start a new project every other time. So I finish an old project and I start a new one. Then I can finish an old project, then I can start a new one. Then I have to finish an old project, then I can start a new one. Zandra says what she has found about creative U-turns is she eventually comes back. And the, the reason why, in my belief, is because you really want to do that thing. But it's really hard to have such a long period of time between working on it and coming back to it. So, again, keeping up that momentum and that enthusiasm and at the end of the project really being like, okay, if I'm not that interested in this project, then I need to set a time limit. Okay, I have this, I have two more three-hour sessions and then I'm putting a pin in it and this project's done. And that'll be done by Friday. And a lot of times as an artist, your project will never be done because it's not perfect. So in art, so you just have to decide when to call it. You have to decide when, okay, this project is completed because I need to move on to the next because I'm no longer enthused by it, but I'm going to show up and I'm going to actually fluff it up a bit so that I feel somewhat satisfied with it. And then once you're done with it, you know, you give yourself a little time and you go back and you look at it and you're like, wow, I'm really glad I decided to put a pin in it because I was really done. So Kim says one project dates back to 1997, but she can't let it go. That sounds just like Leonardo da Vinci with the Mona Lisa. It took him about 10 years to do it, except for, wait, what, 1997? That's like 20, 21 years? No, I don't know. I can't count. Sandra's going to start doing that. Good. I'm throwing, just throwing stuff out there. If it sounds like it would work for you, then perfect. Try it out. Jawa says he thinks part of the reason it's tough to come back to it is because it might feel like you'll have to start from the beginning and maybe you lost some of your skills. Exactly. That's exactly it, Jawa. That's, that's rings true with me. Sandra says she has an entire legal filing cabinet drawer full, mostly of finished songs that I just need to put the fork in. <laughs> Jawa word, Sandra says. Okay, you guys. Maybe you should have some homework today. Um, now, I already gave you guys homework. Your homework is just to follow along. How about that? Fork it, Zandra. Yeah. Take a day. You know, I would encourage you to sit down and try the exercise I told you with a thesaurus and the dictionary and, and my process for poetry, just to sit down and play. I would encourage you to do that. And then if you have time, once you're done with that, you might find that you have that drive to go through and maybe play with one of those those uh songs that are in your filing cabinet jawa says oh you write songs cool what kind of music <laughs> fork it i like that put a fork in it so a couple examples of how this sudden wave of indifference can strike us Baby steps, Kim says. Exactly. Exactly. Show up and play. Show up and play and find that, that energy that you've been missing. Like Jawa said, showing up and feeling like you're a beginner again. Well, that's okay. Then maybe you need to show up, set a timer for 30 minutes, and just play. No obligations. No requirements. Just play. Sandra says so many things. She does pop, bluesy pop. She attempts at EDM and experiments howling. Ooh, I like howling. That sounds fun. All right. So when artistic U-turn arrives on a sudden wave in, of indifference, we greet our newly minted products or our delightful process with awe. What does it matter anyhow? Or it's just a start. Everybody else is much further ahead. Yes, and they will stay that way if we stop working. The point is we have traveled light years from where we were when we were blocked. 
We are now on the road and the road is scary. We begin to get distracted by roadside attractions or detoured by the bumps. And I'm going to read you guys one example here. An actor is told to get his headshots together and check back with a prestigious agent. He doesn't get his headshots and he doesn't check back in. Now that is self-sabotage. I'm going to read one more. A screenwriter has an agent interested in wrapping a script with just a few changes. He doesn't make the changes. Boom. Artistic U-turn. Shoot yourself in the foot. Abandon it. How do you feel after you do that? Probably not very good. Probably going to beat yourself up again. And as I said, continue that cycle. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. In dealing with our creative U-turns, we must first all extend ourselves some sympathy. Creativity is scary. And in all careers, there are U-turns. Sometimes these U-turns are best viewed as recycling times. We come up to the creative jump, we run out from it like a skittish horse, and then we circle the field a few times before trying that fence again. We are doubly shamed, first by our fear and second by our reaction to it. And this is a cycle. And we have to start by having sympathy with ourselves. Not wallowing in it, but not beating ourselves up. Jawa says, awesome. He likes some blues and pop, and he used to go to raves in his early 20s. Ha ha! Word, Zondra says. All right. A successful creative career is always built on successful creative failures. The trick is to survive them and not give up. Even our most illustrious artists have taken creative U-turns in their time. Creativity, not time, would best heal your creative wounds. Showing up to play. Have some compassion. Creative U-turns are always born from fear. Fear of success or fear of failure. It doesn't really matter which. The net result is the same. To recover from a creative U-turn or a pattern involving many creative U-turns, we must first admit that it exists. Yes, I did react negatively to fear and pain. Yes, I do need help. Think of your talent as a young and skittish horse that you're bringing along. It will make mistakes. It'll be frightened by obstacles it hasn't seen before. And your job as the creative jockey is to keep your horse moving forward and to coax it into finishing the course. Like I said, it's mind games. You got to understand. First of all, take a look at what the jump what jumps make your horse so skittish? You may find that certain obstacles are far more scary than others. Who do I know who has done a successful rewrite? Ask them how to do one. Who do I know that has written a successful song? Ask them how to do it. Who do I know that, you know, and the list goes on and on. The point is to find a more seasoned creative in your field or your, or your subject at hand and really just get their take on it. You know, what do you do when you struggle with this? Because honestly, there's no creative out there that doesn't struggle with something. Once we admit the need for help, the help arrives. The ego always wants to claim self-sufficiency. It would rather pose as a creative loner than ask for help. Ask anyway. Faced with a creative U-turn, ask yourself, who can I ask for help? Then start asking. I want another cup of coffee. It's 3.30. It's too late for coffee, right? Blasting through blocks. Any buried barriers must be aired before the work can proceed. And that's exactly what we're doing, you guys. So give yourself a pat on the back. Pat, pat, pat. I showed up. I'm showing up for myself. I'm going to excavate the things that are holding me, me back. And I'm going to continue to show up. Sandra says, it's just woke up. It's not too late for, she just woke up. It's not too late for coffee. Eh, I have to get up early, but maybe I'll have more. Hello, Jeremy. Jeremy says, yay. All right. So blocks are seldom mysterious. They are instead recognizable artistic defenses against what is perceived rightly or wrongly as hostile environment. 
Hmm. So when we get a block, it's because we perceive that we're in some type of peril and they're like defense mechanisms. So for instance, if I feel like I'm, let's see, going back to last week, our early patternings and exercise, one of my things was, you know, I'm not supposed to put my needs first. Um, and showing up for myself creatively is putting my needs first. So a lot of times our subconscious creates defense mechanisms um, that helped us to survive situations when we were younger. Um, and a lot of these things no longer serve us. So that's what this is about. We're, we're, we're discovering what they are so we can break them down. Jolly, you did show up. You did a good thing today. Awesome. Proud of you guys. <laughs> All right, so remember, your artist is a creative child. It sulks, it throws tantrums, it holds grudges, and it harbors irrational fears. And we continue to do things that worked for us as children when we're in environments that maybe are now not the best things for ourselves. So, you know, we created our own beliefs about things that sometimes we need to dismantle. All right, convince your artist that it is safe to come out and play. And a lot of that comes with letting go of those expectations. Beginning any new project, is a good, it, it's a good idea to ask your artist a few simple questions. These questions will help remove common bugaboos standing between your artist and the work. These same questions asked when work grows difficult or bogs down usually acts to clear the obstructed flow. So here we have a list of five, five questions. So... Here's more homework for you, Zandra. On top of that little exercise I told you, why don't you start with this? And you guys all, if you are having issues creating something, I encourage you to go through and find something, find anything, whether it be big or small, that you can ask these questions about that you've been avoiding working on a project. So it's asking us to list any resist, list any resist, resentment. Oh my God. <laughs> Told you I wanted coffee, right? List any resentments, anger you have in connection with, with this project that you're, you're struggling with completing. Some examples are, I resent being the second artist ass, not the first. I resent the editor. They just nitpick me. Um, I resent doing work for this idiot. He never pays me on time. So those are some examples. So number two, ask your artist to list any and all fears about the projected piece of work and anyone connected to it. Some examples are, I'm afraid the work will be rotten and I won't know it. I'm afraid I'll never finish. I'm afraid I will get, be embarrassed. Thirdly, ask yourself if that's all. Have you left out any itsy bitsy fear? Have you suppressed any stupid anger? Get it out on that page. Number four, ask yourself what you stand to gain by not doing this piece of work. This can be kind of one of the most difficult things to unpack, so let's go through these examples. So the question is, ask yourself what you stand to gain by not completing this piece of work. If I don't write this piece, no one can hate it. If I don't write this piece, my jerk editor will worry. If I don't paint, sculpt, act, sing, dance, I can criticize others knowing that I could do better. Number five, make your deal. The deal is, okay, creative force, you take care of the quality and I'll take care of the quantity. Sign your deal and post it up and finish your damn project. A word of warning, this is a very powerful exercise. It can be fatal damage to creative block. So I, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a photo of these questions and print them off or um, type up like a little form so that when I'm working on a project, I can actually fill this out and have it on hand because 
you and me both know that creative block will continue to pop up its head. And I really don't feel like sparing any more time for it. So the best way to navigate that is this, this task of blasting through the blocks. So let's, let's say I'm going to go ahead and when we're done with this call, I'm going to take care of that and I'm going to fill this out about, I have two projects. Um, Mm, I'm going to take and fill this out about at least one project, and then I'm going to start working on that project. Um, I definitely am going to spend the rest of this day making art because, um, like I said, I've been really distracted this week. I've, I've showed up and I've made art, but I've been really distracted this week, and I haven't completed some of the things that I was like, dude, I want to complete these. So I'm going to read one final quote for you guys. Be really whole, and all things will come to you. You don't have to be broken, sad, and depressed to make art. In fact, you'll make more better art if you take care of that. All right. We have a bunch of tasks here. I'm going to leave you guys to them. We'll, again, do our check-in next week, and we'll go over our tasks. I want to congratulate you guys all for showing up. We are 75% of the way through this work this workbook. You guys are doing awesome. Um, you guys are all doing really, really good work here. And I'm proud of you for showing up. Thank you for joining me. And without further ado, I will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe, like this channel, share it with your friends if they, if you think they would find it helpful. And don't forget to be easy on yourself this week and encourage that creative child to come out and play. Get those expectations off to the side and allow yourself to just to come and create. Thank you, Zandra, for sharing. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing with your friend. Um, like I said, uh, Zandra, oh, so those of you guys who weren't here last week, um, we talked about, oh yeah, you're so welcome, Kim. Glad to be here for you guys. Those of you guys who weren't here last week, we're talking about continuing this um, this weekly art, art meetup um, every Sunday at two o'clock. Um, some Sundays I might choose to just post a video. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what we do going forward. Um, I might need to do a break in between um, just to tie up some loose ends, but I'm going to grab some books here. Uh, Kim purchased some art books that we were talking about going over. Um, Zandra went ahead and purchased these books. Um, so some books that we're going to talk about um, continuing forward on is this book, Steal Like an Artist. Um, there's this book, The War of Art. And there's this book, Art in Fear. Um, and so we might be, well, we're going to be going forward, picking one of these books to start with. Um, and then we'll continue on from there. Uh, so since you guys want to continue doing these, these meetups, I'm more than happy to do that. And you're so welcome for posting them. I'm glad to do them. Uh, you guys are also keeping me artistically accountable. Um, we're forming our own little, our own little renegade community here. Um, so I'm glad to have you guys. All right. Kim says she's going to get the books too. So we'll just start with these and then we'll move on with, with more. Um, we'll just see what happens with our little group and we'll, we'll just let it grow and we'll let it be its own little, little creative corner for us so all right you guys you have a wonderful week I have a lot of art to do I'm going to repot some plants I got to fold my laundry so got a busy day ahead of me and 40 hour work week again almost almost 40 hours so anyway you guys take it easy out there and feel free to message me if you have any issues any questions um and i will see you next week at 2 p.m pacific daylight time ciao for now